Captain's Log, Stardate 27th of Space October. We're about to, to, about to launch on an epic voyage of discovery. We're going to start off by flying our amazing space vehicle in laser attack from the Spectrum Book of Games. Moving on, I shall take command of Space Fleet 5 in laser fight in the OK Space Zone. After that, we'll refresh our palettes with arcane action from the Tim Hartnell's giant book of Spectrum Games is Cosmos. We'll then test my navigational skills to the utmost with space flight from stimulating simulations. Finally, we shall make sure we keep the Earth safe for all good people with Galactic Guardian from Tim Hartnell's giant book of Spectrum Games. So, Make sure your fuel tanks are full, your gyros are spinning, your laser pistols are fully recharged, and you bring along some space protection, because you never know, we might meet some green-skinned space ladies. So, five, four, three, two, one, we have liftoff. Laser Attack. This is a very exciting game that uses some rather unusual graphics techniques to good effect. The screen is treated as if it were a spherical universe. So, if you go off the top of the screen, you reappear at the bottom, and if you go off at the right, you reappear at the left. This game is a race against the clock. You have 100 seconds in which to annihilate the enemy ship with your infallible laser weapon. The chase is on. At the beginning of the, this game, you have to select a difficulty factor. This governs the unpredictability of the enemy ship's course and the number of stars that appear. The stars act as obstacles in this game. If you hit one, you will be deflected at random, so the fewer there are, the easier it is to see your course. Your ship moves continuously. It is shaped like an arrowhead and can point in any of eight directions. Every time you press a key, it turns clockwise through 45 degrees. The enemy is a revolving cartwheel-shaped disc that meanders through space. To fire your laser, press the up arrow key, 7. Your weapon will fire in a straight line from the point of, the, of your arrow. If you hit the enemy ship, it will disintegrate with appropriate sound and visual effects. The time taken is continuously displayed at the top left of the screen, and when it reaches 100, your time is up. So the time is actually done using the system clock, which is held in three bytes in memory. When you run the game, it initialises those to zero with some pokes. That does some peaks divide by five to get 100 seconds. Let's have a look at laser attack. Laser attack. We are in control of an advanced laser attack ship in pursuit of an enemy craft. Shoot it down before our time is up. Select our difficulty level. Let's go with easy to start with. We have some stars. Beautiful, beautiful stars glimmering in the night sky. You don't get this on the ZX81. So beautiful. Oh, here we are. And we have our spaceship. So seven is fire. I just want to mention the spaceship, as I was typing it in... Oh, it's a bit of colour clash there. If you shoot the stars, they change colour. Um, I thought, that looks a strange shape. And it is, unfortunately, a rotating swastika. Which is... Uh, I can see they're going for some sort of... Yes. Another game? Yes. Let's increase the difficulty level to five. So any key is rotate clockwise, and you can only rotate clockwise. Seven is fire. You can see they're going for some sort of alien, tentacly, rotatey thing, and yeah. They're not the only ones to have fallen for it. There's that hospital in San Diego, the Naval Hospital, that in Google Maps looks terribly bad. The stars are just decorative. Oh. Now, what if... Let's go around. And let's now finally... Go all the way up to the top. The hospital in San Diego, if you look at it on Google Maps, it um, has an unfortunate shape similar to this alien spaceship. That's my space coffee. Fortunately, you said you can go through these stars, which is fine. But you can't. You can only go in one direction. Put probably for budget cuts. Nice use of sound. Oh, that was a funny noise. Beeping at me. Oh, 
So we are running against the clock. And there we've done it. So let's have another go. Just for I might quite actually quite enjoy this. It's not a bad little game. Apart from the uh, unfortunate shape of the alien spacecraft, at least you're shooting. At least you're, at least you are not the alien spacecraft. I was reading um a old sci-fi book from the 30s, which is quite good fun and plenty of action, and the helping other people, other humans throughout the galaxy fighting evil aliens who breathe chlorine, and the hero character utters the immortal phrase "humanity uber Alice." Is that yeah? That hasn't aged well. Right, where are we going? Right. Because it's obviously it'd be easier if you could turn anti-clockwise, but then it'd be a lot less fun. The arrow is well drawn. The little laser zap's quite nice. Oh, it's coming to get me. There. I think that's enough for laser attack. Our next game is from creating political and military simulation games on your micro by micros. It is Laser Fight in the OK Space Zone. This game shows you how much ability you have in picturing situations in three dimensions. You direct your ships to find the enemy fleets as they invoke their incredible tactics to avoid you. In actual fact, the tactics the computer uses rely heavily on chance. The computer picks two sectors at random and heads for the one containing less of your ships. Since most of the sectors will be empty, the enemy fleets head for the second position investigated. You can guess with fair accuracy that this makes the fleets head towards the centre most of the time. The daily display begins by going through all the squares in turn and identifying ones containing your ships. The area surrounding these is then searched for enemy ships, whose presence is reported. The same procedure is repeated to find ships for you to move. When, finally, you manage to force an encounter with the enemy fleets, the results are also reported. The workings of this program are very simple and straightforward, but long and laborious. The two types of ship are dealt with separately, which increases the program length considerably. A tip on tactics. Post picket ships to report on the whereabouts of enemy ships covering the entire region. This uses eight ships. So let's have a go. We need to go and catch the forces of the evil Prince Orion, arch enemy of justice. So what are we waiting for? I've tinkered with this game quite a lot. I had some... A, I typed it in wrong, so I didn't give him any Type 2 ships. So Prince Orion didn't have any battleships. So that's quite dull. He has five fleets, and all his fleets were very small. I found the movement annoying. The ships can see in one direction, you detect the enemy, and then the enemy move before you get there, every single time, because that's, that's what the enemy do. And the way to catch him, you have to englobe him. Um, which would is possible. So in a two-dimensional space, that's eight squares. To get around it, eight squares. In a three-dimensional space, he can go the eight squares of you know would normally get plus up a bit and down a bit, which makes twenty eight twenty that's twenty four plus straight up and straight down, which is twenty six. So you get twenty six fleets, and if if he's bigger than you, he would, he can just break out. I increase the range of the sensors of our type one to two squares, not one, which is actually really I thought it'd be hard. It's actually really easy. I also changed it so if the enemy is in a square with our Type 2 ships, they can't move. Maybe our Type 2 ships stop movement in some kind of magical science way. I also changed it to some after a port, sometimes we move first and sometimes the enemy move first. Mix it up a bit, make it more exciting. But let's get started. We know there are ships now at 113. I'm going to make a note of this on my space strap of paper. He's got, he's got quite a powerful fleet. So that's why originally I, had, I was roaming around fighting space pirates rather than Prince of Riot. So we can't get them in one go. And we don't want to spit our feet up too small because then he'll get us. Which is a bad thing. Because his ships fight as well as our ships. And he has the same number of ships. Off we go for orders. So uh, he's got five fleets. I'm going to slip my... Sh 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 excuse me, get my teeth in. Slip my fleet into... Four parts, so each part should be able to defeat one of his, which means 75 Type 1 ships are going to move up to 2, 2, 2, and 25 Type 2s to 2, 2, 2. 
the game lets you move ships multiple times. I think that's cheating. And Prince of Ryan might do that, but I won't. It's not what I do. The black screen here is the game thinking, calculating all the enemy movements. It picks two random sectors and picks the enemies, picks the sector with the least ships in. It does that and then all the calculations and whatnot. So this takes a little while. Imagine the space noises. Diggy, 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 etc, etc. At the end we get some pretty colours, so I put some pretty colours in. Here we are. Standard day two of the battle. Here's the reports. We have found two enemy fleets, and they're next to each other, so they might gang up on us. So we've got one, two, two, and one, two, three. So we've got a fleet in two, two, two. So I'm going to move them to intercept the fleet at one, two, three. And we're going to move a fleet from one, one, one to one, two, two. So I did this this way, otherwise you, you scatter your type ones around the galaxy like, oh, we found another leather fleet at two, three, four, and four, two, three. So let's get things started. Fleet is waiting for orders. I have the cop. So we know that this fleet at one, two, two. I'm going to move 75 type ones to one, two, two and 25 type 2s to 1, 2, 2, and keep them still. And in 2, 2, 2, I've got a fleet at, let's keep up 1, 2, 3, let's move all my fleet. Because here you can put three input lines, separated by commas, so you doesn't have to keep asking you, which is nice. And now it thinks, we should have a battle soon. So that was a big battle. A big battle at 122. We lost a huge chunk of our fleet, but we wiped them out. So a glorious victory for, Ad, for me. I threw enough bodies at it and I killed the kill bots with their preset kill limit. So it wipes out one of his fleets. And the second battle. Again, we've lost most of our fleet, but destroyed his. Unfortunately, those two fleets are now um, absolutely decimated. Obviously, not a lot of writing home to um, grieving parents, sweethearts, that sort of thing. On to day three. In space, no one can hear you grieve. Day three of the battle. Bit of colours. So, I'm going to keep this fleet together, I think, and the other two will combine them. So, 111, our super fleet has no ships in range. We've got ships at 144, a big fleet at. Ooh, he's got a super fleet. And he's got a super fleet at 334. And a little fleet at one, a normal fleet at one fourth. That's he's got a double fleet there. So okay, so that's nice confirming. I could have done something like if a Type One is on on their own, they get better range. So you encourage you to split that, split up the Type Ones and the Type Twos a little bit. Um, so then you could, you'd have a picket ship without a Type Two, which would get you better better range rather than this clump them all together. So now there's a big big fleet at 144, another one at 334. Let's keep these together. And there's a, a big fleet at 334. So 122, two, we just moved those. It'd be nice if I kept a record, but then it had to keep a record of all 400 ships, which would be a bit silly. So these guys, I'm going to move them to Two two two. Let me regroup. So I've just moved those; they can stay still. Do the repairs. We 
He has a little fig. Desperately listening to the hyperwave radio or whatever it's called. In the E, Doc Smith always going through the ether and the sub ether and all kinds of stuff that is made up. I think it's interesting we have the old problems of command, control, and intelligence. You know where things are, but it's not very useful. He has got a massive fleet. He's now combined all his fleet. He's got a super fleet at 234. This is going to be nasty. Well, that's good to know he's got a super fleet. The fleets all move independently, but they can move to. They can obviously, uh, if they fight together, you're in trouble. So we're not two, the ships at two, three, four. Let's keep these together. Two, two, three, three. So that's adjacent to his super fleet, slightly bigger. These I'm going to move again to two, three, three. Let's combine all our fleets. Some sort of super space Trafalgar. Let's keep them. So I'm not going to cheat. Prince of Ryan cheats. Prince of Ryan calculates his move, possibly stroking his evil goatee. Because I have a heroic moustache. Prince Orion has a goatee of evil. It's possibly green. I could have bought an Emperor Zerg that was in the shop the other day. I thought, no, I don't want to fill the house with nonsense. Day five. He's got his three fleets at one, two, three. So he's certainly in range for us to get him. I've taken a lot, lot of losses. Okay. So he is at one, two, three. Let's move all of them to one, two, three. All, all the fleet we've got left, you seem to have lost uh, quite a lot of, of uh, brave sailors. Ooh, nasty. So, we lost 155 Type 1 ships with 21 left. We've lost 48 Type 2 ships, the battleships, 19 left. He lost 180 Type 1s, none left. And 51 Type 2s, 9 left. That is absolute carnage. But he's got 9 Type 2s left and, because I've got Type 2s, he can't move. Will he surrender? There's always a chance he'll surrender, unless I've coded that bit wrong as well. Basically, it calculates all the strength and all your strength. If you've got 10 times as much strength as he has, he'll surrender. If he's completely wiped out, he surrenders as well. Standard day six. His fleet is at 1, 2, 3. So we've got double the amount of battleships and our Type 2s. So we are not going to move. We're going to keep pounding him until he scuttles his fleet or surrenders. Ready for orders. Hopefully we could actually win. We're not going to move. Actually, we're going to move one Type 1 ship to, in case he's got another fleet around somewhere, but no Type 2s. Now I've changed it a lot. I actually like it more. I played it a few times last night and it was like, no, I wasn't enjoying it. So he's wiped out all his Type 2s. Has he been completely wiped out? Have I got the code wrong? It's always interesting. So I think I've wiped out five fleets. He needs to go through and count up all the enemy spaces and see what their strength is. I'm hoping Prince Iran will do the honourable thing and surrender. Yes! 
I spelt fleet wrong. Whoa, I had 400 ships to start with and have 24 left. Well done. Do you want to try again? But I think that's that's interesting game. I do, The simulation was very good. It could do with some graphics, but you're not going to get that on the spectrum in basic because that'll be, yeah, uh, three-dimensional cube. Yeah, it's not going to work very well. I'm not going to try again. But in the end, with my tweaks, I enjoyed that. One of the ones I wanted to play and I fixed it up and I think it was good. I now typed in a game from Tim Hartnell's giant book of Spectrum games. This one is Cosmos. In this exciting game by David Perry, you have to try and shoot as many bird-like ships as possible within a limited time. You move your sights around the galaxy until you spot an alien. The alien will try to evade your lethal lasers. You have one and a half minutes to try and zap as many of the aliens as possible before their final attack. This program is well supplied with REM statements, so it's fairly easy to see what is happening. So. Let's shoot some aliens. Cosmos, the object of the game, destroyed the alien bird like ships. I redefined the keys. The original keys were R, V, G, and D, and F, which is, well, they're sort of all together. So I've made them traditional QAOP space. So let's get started and try and save the galaxy. Nice screen here, lots of stars. Oh, and there's the first alien. Oh, so you move your... So the only... And that's a hit! So the only uh, user-defined graphics are the, the three characters of the alien itself. See me working with the effort. We're using in key so we can only move or fire. We can't do both. And the alien does bob around quite a lot. But I've got another one. Fortunately, we don't pay per shot. Got him. Coming in here to take our whatever they're after, lay eggs in us, maybe, who knows. Drop space poo on our space cars, not having that. Maybe try and steal our space chips when we're outside on the uh, space seafront in Space Blackpool. Come here, you. I think you a space cat. Keep it away. Oi. Ah, overshot. So it's quite tricky to control, but rather elegant, really. It's a shame you can't go diagonally, but that would require... Gotcha. Not using in keys, but rather the in function. There are games in this book which do that, but this is not one of them. But, I actually quite like this. You don't get any variation. You could vary how much the aliens move, possibly, but hit. Or how quickly they move. There might be an option there, but this is pretty good. Nice bit of variety, and it doesn't have to contain any in inappropriate symbols. Come on, you bastard! Come on! I only hit six of these things. I'm hardly um, a, com a computer wizard. I don't think I'm. Oh, another one. That's seven of them. I don't think I'm going to be the last starfighter. Out of time. So I've got set score of 70. You don't lose points for your score, which would be good if you did. So let's have another go. It's actually quite like that. So for example, you could lose points for missed shots. Oh. And if you could rewrite it a little bit, which I'm not going to do, not at this point anyway. Uh, it's Saturday morning, I need to go to the gym in a bit. Um, you could make it so... Rather than using in keys, you use that other nonsense I mentioned, which it's a lot trickier. Well, I say it's a lot trickier. Once you know what you're doing, it's fine. That's a hit. Right. Can I get better than seven hits? Oh, that's good. I like the way the screen's divided up neatly. You've got the main play area, a nice white line separating us from the border. It's nice and tidy. And the score area. You don't get you don't get any points for shooting its wings. Only the uh, 
Hull. Oh, I nearly had him then. So it's a bit of... There's a fair amount of luck depending where the bird moves. Sorry, the space bird, alien thing. Is it a bird of prey? Who knows? Because that would be a copyright thing. Oh, come here, you. As we know, fortunately, you can avoid copyright by changing one letter. Like the Enterprise. Or the Enterprise in another game in here, which I'll probably do in a future video. Which looks rather good. But you're the Starship Enterprise in a fighting the Klongons. I'm sure that'll get past the lawyers. Fine. Original character. Original character do not steal. I nearly had him then. Gotcha, sucker! Right, running out of time. I need to get two more hits to get the high score. One more hit to get the high score and I've got ten seconds to do it in. Oh yes! Now, can I push the boat out? Will I be able to get to him in time? Three, two, one, and... That's a no. But that's pretty good. Cosmos. So this is Cosmos. I fiddled around with it. Ignore the flashy blue green at the top. So let's get started. I made it, I'm getting bored. I was getting bored of the aliens always being the same colour. So I changed it so every time you get a new alien, you get a new random colour. So the score you get from killing the alien. Depends, it depends on the colour, so blue aliens are worth one, red are worth two. Oh look, I'm using the ink colour codes. I also decided to change the controls, rather than using in keys, to use the bizarre in mechanism, which is in the book in a different game, and it's also documented in the Spectrum manual. So what you, what you can do here, the Spectrum can cope with you pressing multiple keys at once. So here, you can see that I'm Moving diagonally. So what you do, you, you, rather than use in keys, you use the in command and look at a certain point in memory. So if you look at in 65022, there's a number in there which corresponds to five keys on the keyboard, A, S, D, F, G. And you get a byte code out of those. If a certain key is pressed, you get a different number. So we can now cope with going diagonally up and down. We can press O and P at the same time, but that they catch each other, right? But we can certainly move and fire. It's a little bit clunky because it wasn't quite intended for this, but it certainly makes it a lot more, a lot smoother to play. And I think it's an improvement, especially different colours, different score, a bit more variety. You still lose the stars, which is a bit of a shame, but the stars slowly get overpainted by the uh, alien spacecraft because they destroy the stars. But this is one I've actually, I have actually gone back to and improved just because I felt like it. Which is the, what typing games are all about. With the increased score, you should probably punish yourself by, by, by missing. There. That was fun. We now move on to Stimulating Simulations, second edition by C.W. Engel, first published in 1977, and the game, or simulation, sorry, Space Flight. In this simulation, we are living in the year 2062 as the captain of a spaceship. Our orders are to deliver medical supplies from Alpha at coordinates 1010 to Beta at coordinates 8080. My rating as a space pilot will depend upon how fast I can make the trip. During each time interval, you will be able to determine the following information. Time elapsed, our location in terms of XY coordinates, the amount of fuel left, our speed, the angle at which we are moving, and our distance from the planet. To change direction or increase or decrease speed, you can fire one of two kinds of rocket, main and half. These rockets take one unit and a half unit of fuel, respectively. A C will allow you to coast for five time intervals. Once you decide how much fuel you're going to burn, you must decide on the direction in which you'll, you'll be firing the rockets. You're able to rotate the, your spaceship with small thrusters as it drifts in space. The direction, directions are shown below. Once you fire your main rockets for three or four turns to increase your speed, you can conserve fuel by drifting through space. 
you must start to fire in the opposite direction to slow down before arriving at beta. In order to meet arrival conditions, you must be within a distance of 1 and at a speed of less than 1. So, let's have a look at this. Here's an example of the corrections you can see here and a retro fire. So let's have a go at space flight. Data readout, 0 hours. We have 10 litres of fuel. Our location is 0, 0. We have no speed. The ship isn't going anywhere. But if it was, it would be a bearing of 0. The distance is 113.13 space units. We've had some problems with the gyros, which means the angle of uh, our ship will be a, a bit more wonky than usual. So we know we're at 0, 0. The place we need to get to is 80, 80. And according to the little chart in the book, we need to go about an angle of 45 degrees. First of all, though, let's have a main burn, which is a full unit of fuel. An angle of 45 degrees. We have got slightly wonky gyros, so off we go. <laughs> Exciting sound effect there. So we've moved slightly. We're just about at one and a half. What X is nearly one, Y is a half. Velocity is quite slow. We're not quite high. They're not quite going the right direction. So let's have another full burn. This time, rather than going at 45 degrees, we need to go a bit more to the left. So let's go for 60 degrees. For some reason, zero in this game is, I will describe as east. But you'll see that, you saw that on the chart, which I'll put on the screen later on. So let's have a good old burn. So our velocity has increased to 3.2. We have 8 litres of fuel left. And we're going in roughly the right direction. So what I'm going to do now is coast, which is... Just skip forward five five units, five minutes. So we're moving on. We're progressing pretty well, actually. So let's have another burn. Let's go for 40. We've got 42 degrees, which is a bit too far to the left. Let's go for 48 degrees, which hopefully will correct us. Our gyros are now very wonky. We're now too far to the left, but we're progressing okay. What this game doesn't tell you is you have velocity in both the x-axis and the y-axis, and you have momentum. So once you get close, you need to slow down and stop. But at the moment, we're doing pretty well. We have 7 litres of fuel. We're going at 6 you know, space units per whatever, and we're cracking on nicely. Distance is slow. Oh, aliens. When you meet aliens, they stop you dead in the water, which is really quite annoying. It could be useful if you're going quite fast and you're approaching the uh, target planet. Fortunately, we're not. So let's have, we have to start off from scratch again. Full burn, 45 degrees. And again, a full burn. We're going too far to the left this time. So let's go with a bit of correction to the right. We've used half our fuel now. Let's have one more burn. 40 degrees is slightly too far to the right now. So let's go with too far to the left, sorry, let's go 50 degrees. The offset compass is a little confusing. Okay, so we're 32, 32, and we are going in roughly the right direction. So I'm going to coast. Distance is dropping at... Aliens have stopped us again. Hopefully we get, hopefully we get to shoot some aliens soon, because they are quite irritating. So that's again a full burn. 45 degree angle. And let's have another full burn at 45 degree angle. We don't want to run out of fuel. If we run out of fuel... Interesting. Yes, I just spotted a bug in the code. It doesn't actually detect you out of fuel. It detects if you have less than zero fuel, which is a bit silly. But I'll correct that in a second. So we are creeping up. We're slightly too far... We're slightly further to the right than we should be. But... It's not too bad. So we'll get reach our destination on the x-axis first and the y-axis. So let's do a half burn at 30 degrees. And let's now coast. So now y should increase a bit fast, faster. That just takes us some time. So we're, 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 we are where we need to be on the x-axis. 
y-axis we're not so I'm going to do a half burn and this time I'm going to go what I'm going to call northwest and now let's coast so x we've gone too far Oh, that's good. Aliens have now stopped us. This is good. It's good because we don't have to worry about slowing down. So we've gone slightly too far on the x-axis and not far enough on the y-axis. So we need to go... Okay, I can do a half burn at... We've got 135 degrees, which is... No. It's backwards, yeah, it's backwards and up. And now, hopefully, we can coast. And hopefully, we'll get there before we run out of fuel completely. So we've only got one half a burn left. So, Y is coming up nicely. X is coming down. So, Y is correct. X is too high. The question is, can X get close enough before we run out of fuel? So, we need to go, we've got one half burn left, and let's go 225, and hopefully this, we're slow enough to dock, and we need to, be, yeah, we're not going to make it. So what we have to do now, I think it detects, as soon as we do a burn, it detects we're out of fuel. So let's try that again. Let's do a full burn, 45 degree angle. So we are very close. Is the aliens are quite annoying. It could be that I've got a bug in the code where I have aliens too often, or it could be just plain bad luck. Because it should be, every time you do something, you get a random number between 1 and 50. If it's less than six, you've got a problem, which is either the gyros, the fuel line, life support, aliens, or meteors. Meteors affect your speed slightly. So we are 59 degrees, which is too far to the left. So let's correct that by going a bit far to the right. Let's go with a main burn, 30 degree angle. So we're still slightly too far. So let's go with, again, a main burn at 35 to correct it and that's not too bad that's coast so you want to make sure you have enough fuel to maneuver at the end because all you can do is main and half you can't do a little one so distance is dropping in order to dock distance must be less than one and speed must be less than one it's all nice and smooth Nice and smooth. This is going a lot better. We're halfway there. Distance is dropping. Plenty of fuel left. I could go faster, but I'd like to save the fuel. Fuel costs money. So. I think it's going pretty well. We haven't met anything bad. So what I need to do now is start slowing down because I'm now really close but too fast. So let's have a main burn in the opposite direction of travel. This is 225. So we've now basically reached our destination, but we're going too fast. So another retro burn of the retro rockets. And it took us 0.4 hours, which is 40, which is a 40 space units. 40 minutes really. And our space rating is 80. So that was space flight. It's the best things you can do to make make it different. This is this this book always gives you um, minor and major options. So you can change the starting position, which is fairly easy. Change the amount of fuel. Again, have more fuel or less fuel. You can give yourself a time limit rather than drifting forever. You can move the planet. You can change the arrival conditions, make it harder or easier. You can change how likely problems are. Those are all quite easy to do. To make it more challenging, there are major modifications, such as you have to fire small thruster rockets to rotate the ship. 
So if they change the angle, maybe that costs you fuel. Have meteors actually hit the ship? Maybe that does something different. Have to use meteor shields, which could run out. Actually fight the aliens rather than just stopping. Have to visit more than one planet. Have planets evolving gravitational force. Or have refueling stations. But I think for now, that's pretty good. Especially for 1977. Our final game today is a return to Tim Hartnell's giant Book of Spectrum games with Galactic Guardian. I am the Galactic Guardian. The object of the game is to defend the planet Earth from hostile battle cruisers, which fly in formation, as you can see in this sample run from the game. The ship moves up and down using the 6 and 7 keys with 0 to fire. The game contains full instructions and was written by David Perry. This is the second one we've done of David Perry, and I'm liking his work. Let's shoot some aliens. Galactic Guardian. Move the Enterprise. I see what you've done there. Using key 7 to go up, 6 to go down to protect your home planet. To do this, you must try to aim your lasers on the oncoming alien ship. 0 to fire lasers. I am the Starship Enterprise. And the alien looks like the space shuttle. Press any key to commence. Very posh. So a nice board around the screen and a nice white line. We draw the planet. The game has some machine code in it, which is nice. It's not a learning game. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Look at those lovely stars. So, I believe the machine code is used for the sound effects. That's just normal beeps, though. But the la I think the laser is machine code. So the ships come in formation, and you only need to shoot one of them. The other one's probably a coward. The good news is, provided they don't hit you, it doesn't matter if they go to Earth. You can sometimes hit both of them. Just like that. So you get a pink alien, sorry, sorry, a magenta alien, and a green alien. Ooh. Yes, aliens land. You don't lose points for aliens landing, which perhaps you should do. So you move up and down at the same speed as the aliens move forward. But it looks nice. There's a nice arc. Done by you can draw and then pi is half. Oh, they're down here now. So the aim of the game, you keep shooting until you die. At which point you can try again and go for a new high score. It took about 20 minutes to type in. The only problem I had was one line where the printer got a bit wonky. It's using the Z I think it's, it's, it's the ZX printer, so the font is pretty good. It's just one line, it got crumpled slightly. Fortunately, there was a similar line later on, so you could work out what it was doing with the draw statement. But I rather like this. If we go, this is going to be tight. Oof, that was close. So the aliens don't actually shoot back, which is makes things easier. Oh, they do try and they will hit you if necessary. Oh, that was close. So because we're using in keys, we only get one key at a time. There are other games in this book which use a better method, which you can do in basic, but it's a lot more complicated using in, and that can detect multiple keystrokes. So here, I'm pressing two keys at once, and nothing's happening, because I was trying to go down and fire, which it won't let you do. Go. But 
I'm rather liking this. It's not the most advanced game in the world. It'd be, you know, be nice if you had smoother scrolling, but it's a basic game. You're not going to get smooth scrolling and a pixel level in basic. Because that's tricky. It involves poking. We should not... There is poking in the game. We, we get the uh, five graphics. So the Enterprise, for legal reasons, is three characters. And I'm dead. So the Enterprise is three characters wide and the spaceship is two. And then the rest of it is that. So, again, press any key to run. It will redraw the screen. But I think Galactic Guardians is a good little game. On to the next one. Thank you for watching this selection of sci-fi games. I enjoyed typing them in. Hopefully you weren't too bored me watching them. There's a lot of interesting games here in this area. I like the arcade ones. They're good fun. I like the variety of action, apart from the unfortunate swastika. In Laser Fight and the OK Space Zone could be really good if it had decent graphics and control, like on a decent computer. Unfortunately, not in the 16K of basic. I'm looking forward to some games in that book also. There's one called Galactic Empire, which I'll be doing again. There's another one called Space Quest by David Perry, which I'm looking forward to. But for now, I think we shall stop and move on with the rest of our lives. Thank you for watching.